Welcome to the R video tutorial on determining sample size in R. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to determine the sample size for a single sample test, a two sample test, a one sided test, and a two sided test. Okay, so let's get started. So, the first thing we're going to have to have is a hypothesis that we wish to test. So, in this case, I have a null hypothesis of mu equals 15 versus mu equals, not equals, is greater than 15. This is the hypothesis that I'm trying to test. I need to know the power that I need for my test. So if there is a difference, if, if mu is truly greater than 15, what probability do I want to be able to detect that? So here, if it's bigger than 15, I want to be able to detect it with a probability of 0.9 or 90% of the time. I'm going to need to know the population standard deviation, which is often difficult to find. But in my case, it's 2.32. And I also need to know how big of a difference is important to find. Okay, I need something bigger than 15. Well, 15.01 is bigger than 15, but is that useful? So when I think of power, I think of, okay, well, if there's a difference that's 2.5 units, that's what I picked here, 2.5 units bigger than mu, I want to be able to find that with probability 0.9. Okay, and I'm also going to need to know the significance level of the test that I'm conducting. And this uh, one I picked 0.01. All right, so let's give this a go. So here's the syntax. And in the syntax, you just put in the information that you know, the power that you desire, which in our case is 0.9, the difference that's meaningful to find. So this is the difference that we would hope to be able to find with power 0.9. Uh, the standard deviation in the population could be difficult to find, but it's there and you need it, otherwise it won't work. The significance level is 0 0.01. In our case, this is a one sample test. We have one mu up here. Okay, It's also a one-sided test because we're interested in greater than. It's not, not equals. That would be a two-sided test. And if we run this, we get the following output. Okay, so here's the output. And look, right at the very top of the output, it tells you n equals 14.06354. Wait a minute. I can't get 14.06354 units. I can get 14 or I can get 15. In order to preserve the power, you need to always, always, always round this up. So in our case, you would need to get a sample size of 15 in order to make sure that you hit a power of 0.9 or higher. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You always round it up. For a two-sided test uh, and a two-sample test, we'll look at this hypothesis. Mu1 equals mu2 versus mu1 not equal to mu2. Okay, so focus on not equals. That's the two sided part. There's mu1 and mu2. That's the two sample part. And the syntax is incredibly the same. Okay, You pick the power that you want for your test. You have to pick a difference that you hope to find with that sort of power. So if there's a difference of 1.6 units between mu1 and mu2, I want to be able to find that with probability 0.95. The standard deviation, and this is the pooled standard deviation, which we're assuming that each population has the same standard deviation, of 2.14. You'll have to find this on your own in practice, but for here, this is an example, and I picked 2.14. Significance level 0 0.02. This is a two-sample test. I have mu1 and mu2. The alternative is two-sided in the sense that I have not equals here. So this is the type of test we have. Now let's see how big of a sample size we're going to need. So I run this, and I immediately see that the n that I'm going to need is 57.8. Well, like I mentioned before, you always round this up. Always round it up to the next integer. So in this case, it will be 58. It also gives you a note. n is the number in each group. So you're going to have to take a sample size of 58 from population 1 and a sample uh, size of 58 from population 2. So 
put those together and you'll realize you have to get a lot of data. So in that case, 116 observations or experimental units. So just keep in mind that you always round this up. The calculation is quite easy in R, provided you know the appropriate information. What I find the most difficult to find is the standard deviations. The standard deviations are necessary for the calculation. They're absolutely positively necessary, but finding them is often very difficult, so I would suggest you go look in the literature to see if you can't find something, or do a small uh, pilot study to determine this. All right, so this has been calculating the sample size in R. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.